Good afternoon, CC Feliz. Okay, we're finishing off our series on Worth It, Finish Well. This, in fact, is our last message for this series. And in this series, Paul, we've been studying Bible characters who ran the race of faith and finished well. No, this is very relevant, especially we hear that left and right people are turning away from the faith and even big-time leaders of the church who are falling away. So very disturbing kasi iniisip natin if that happened to them, then ano kaya ang chances na mangyari din sa akin? Isa lang akong quote-unquote ordinary Christian. So is that the way to think about it? Well, let's find out from our Bible character for this afternoon. And to start off our message, I'd like to introduce you to this uh, phrase. It's the phrase alpha male. Alam niyo ba ibig sabihin ng alpha male? Well, the definition is right there. It's a man tending to assume a dominant or domineering role in social or professional situation. Alpha male. Di ba ina-apply din yan sa mga tuta, mga animals? Sino yung alpha doon sa pack, sino yung alpha doon sa mga tuta na pinanganak. <laughs> so, alpha male. Now, the quintessential example for an alpha male is, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with this, the character Dominic Toretto from the Fast and Furious franchise played by Vin Diesel. You know, parang siya talaga yung uh, the ultimate picture of an alpha male. <laughs> so, pagtingnan nga yung katabi ninyo kung siya po isang lalaki, tingnan nyo nga. Mukha bang alpha? O mukha lang male? <laughs> Sige. Now, I introduce this phrase to you this afternoon because the character that we will study is somewhat an alpha male. He is a born leader. No, he's a born leader. He's a very courageous man. He's known to stumble every now and then. Pero the only reason why we're, why we're so familiar with his blunders is because he's the first one to volunteer. Pag uh, merong papagawa, he's the first one to speak his mind kung merong tinatanong ang ating Panginoon. And so, I think alam natin kung sino ito, none other than the Apostle Peter. The Apostle Peter, this big burly fisherman uh, who is the leader of the disciples, considered the leader of the disciples and one of the leaders of the early church. So, let's see what happens when an alpha male encounters the Lord Jesus Christ in a very, very personal way and how this transformed his life and what are the lessons that we can learn from him. A little bit of a background for Apostle Peter. His original name was Simon. It was uh, actually Christ who gave him the name Peter or Cephas. No? His name is Simon. He was from Bethsaida. His father was Jonas the fisherman. And like father, like son, he also became a fisherman along with his brother, Andrew. Now, his brother, Andrew, was a disciple of John the Baptist. Actually, it was Andrew who introduced Peter to Jesus. Now, the other disciples, John's, John and James, were their business partners in the fishing industry. No, they were their partners. Now, after Peter's marriage, he settled in Capernaum. We know that he has a wife. Remember, Jesus healed him his mother-in-law. So, meron siyang wife. And he actually took his wife alongside him in his later missionary assignments. We read about this in 1 Corinthians 9.5. So, uh, sabi ng iba, si Peter daw yung first pope. Well, yung pope. So, si Peter, may, may wife, whether or not pope siya. Meron siyang wife. Siya po ay kinasal. The title for our message this afternoon is Finish Well, Look Unto the Finisher of Our Faith. Can you say this with me? Go. Finish Well, Look Unto the Finisher of Our Faith. And let's take a look at this verse in Hebrews chapter 12, the first two verses. Let's read together. Okay. Go. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, 
who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising its shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So we're talking about finishing well. We're talking about finishing well because we are running a race. Run with endurance, the race that is set before us. But as we try to run with endurance, we also are assured that Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. Diba? Napaka-comforting nung words na yon, nung truth na yon. Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Can you repeat that after me? Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Let's make it personal. Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith. Turn to the person next to you. Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Okay, very good. So let's learn from Peter. Let's learn from his failures. Let's learn from his humility. And let's learn about God's grace. First of all, Learn from Peter's failures. Learn from Peter's failures. Now, there are two prominent apostles in the Bible whose lives we know so much about because the New Testament wrote a lot about them. So the other one, of course, uh, was Apostle Paul. No? Now, we know from his past that his ugly past reminds most of us of our lives before we came to know Christ. So, si Paul was a Judaizer, and he persecuted the early church. He knew scriptures, the Old Testament. He knew it from cover to cover. Pero nung ina-apply niya, hindi niya nakita yung Messiah, and he ended up persecuting the very church that was prophesied in the scriptures that he studied. So, pinaparusahan niya yung mga Christians, humihingi siya ng letter of endorsement so that he can punish them and put them into Prison. So, we can relate with that, right? Because for many of us, we came from a, a faith before, and we were sincere. We were sincerely religious, but we were also sincerely wrong. And we thank God that He has shown us the right way. And that was the same case for Paul. He was sincere, but he was also sincerely wrong. So, we can relate with his past. But we cannot relate with his life as a believer. No, ang hirap kasi he seems to be this super apostle who does great exploits for the kingdom. This super apostle who seem to do, who can seem to do no wrong. Hindi siya nagkakamali, wala siyang sablay. Parang ang hirap makarelate. You read about his life in the book of Acts and you read his letters and all you can say in your mind is, sana all. Diba? Sana all. But but hindi ako maging katulad ni, ni Paul. But not Peter. Not Peter. Peter's many blunders remind most of us of our own failures as followers of Christ. Christians na tayo, sumasablay pa rin. Of course, we're still human. We're, we are work in progress. And we can relate with Peter because he did many blunders as a follower of Christ. As a follower of Christ. Let's take a look at some of his failures. Uh, isa sa failure ito niya, no? Next slide, please. Uh, Peter tried to walk on water and then failed. Peter tried to walk on water and then failed. We know how this happened. I know this was right after the feeding of the 5,000. So Jesus instructed his disciples to go on ahead of him to the other side of the lake while he remained and prayed to the Father. And then from a distance, he could see that the boat was being buffeted by the strong waves and the strong wind. And so he decided to go to them by walking on water. The disciples, naman, from afar, they thought they saw a ghost, but Christ introduced himself to them. And we pick up from verse 28 of Matthew 14. Si Peter, siyempre si Peter, sino pa ba? Verse 28, Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, Jesus said. Then Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. 
you of little faith, why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? Peter doubted. Peter had little faith according to Jesus. Bakit kaya? He got out of the boat. He walked on water. Pero you appreciate the Lord. Ano? He was so gracious. He rescued Peter. He rescued Peter. Pero bakit? Bakit little yung faith niya? If we were in Peter's position, I don't think we will do what he did. But why was he rebuked for such little faith? Alam niyo po, meron ho kasing sinasabing emotional faith. Emotional faith. This happens when we anchor our trust, when we anchor our belief on our emotions, on our feelings. And you know what? Our feelings, our emotions are a wonderful part of the way God created us. It's part of who we are and we experience them and it makes us human, yung ating mga emotions. Pero it was never meant to be the anchor of our faith. Mahirap, mahirap yun. Alam natin that that is what happened because when Peter's emotions changed, he was afraid. Whatever it was that he felt before, now he was afraid. Nalagas yung kanyang pananampalataya. It's a hollow kind of faith, emotional faith. It's like nakikinig ka sa isang message and the preacher is preaching about generosity and it so touched you in a very profound manner and you are crying in your house and you pledge to the Lord, Lord, from now on, on top of the tithes, I will give another 10% for the construction fund and another 10% for the campus missionaries, Lord. Naku, pospos na pospos. Actually, high na high sa emotions. High na high sa emotions. And we make, we make hasty vows, we make hasty promises to the Lord, and at the first sign of a little bit of a problem sa ating pera, ayun, hindi na mapanindigan yung pinangako sa Panginoon, or whatever it is na ating sinambi, Lord, gagawin ko ito sa'yo. Nawala yung emotion, nawala na rin yung commitment. Nawala na rin yung commitment. It's a very hollow kind of faith. Pero, Brother Dean, how does faith work? Paano yun? Dapat ba nasa isip lang? Mahirap naman yun, ano? Intellectual faith. Theoretical. A lot of head knowledge, but zero application. You see, the Lord meant for us to trust in Him and to love Him with all of our minds, with all of our, with all of our hearts, and with all of our physical strength. Our entire being, kumbaga, and it begins with us being liberated in our minds with the truth of God's Word the truth of who He is, not our feelings. The truth of who God is based on His Word. And we allow this to change our hearts, which are very deceitful. Change our hearts with the truth that we have embraced in our minds. And then we change our actions based on what we believe in our hearts and in our minds. Emotional faith. Alam nyo, there is a Peter in each one of us. There is a Peter in each one of us. How is that Peter doing? Has he committed any blunders recently? Have you fallen into the trap of embracing emotional faith? Have you fallen into the trap of embracing emotional faith? How else did Peter fail? Next slide, please. Peter recognized the Messiah. Wow, that's a big deal. He recognized the Messiah, but then he failed again. He failed again. So what's the background of this story? You see, Jesus, during the first half of his ministry, was not announcing to everybody that he is the Son of God, that he is the Messiah. But at some point, there had to be a transition, and he gathered his disciples around, and he asked them a non-threatening question. Sabi ni Lord sa kanila, Who do you say people who do you say, who do people say I am? Anong sinasabi ng ibang tao about me? So, sagot ng mga disciples, well, some say that you are Elijah, some say that you are one of the prophets. And then, the Lord directed the question towards them, who do you say I am? Who do you say I am? And of course, it was Peter who answered. It was Peter who answered. Beginning with verse 15 of chapter 16 of Matthew, then he asked them, 
But who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Look at Jesus' reply. You are blessed, Simon, son of John, because my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. It was spirit-inspired, revealed by God directly into the spirit of Peter, causing him to pronounce the truth, the glorious truth that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And isn't that our privilege as followers of Christ to have the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit inside of us. Next lesson yata. The Holy Spirit inside of us, witnessing to our hearts truths of God that cannot be understood otherwise. Truths of God that can only be revealed through the Spirit of God. But look at what happens next. See, after this, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he had to suffer in the hands of the religious leaders, that he had to die a horrible death, but after three days he will rise again and be resurrected. Mahirap na intindihan for the disciples, especially Peter. During one of those times when Jesus explained this, verse 22 of Matthew 16 Peter took him aside and began to reprimand him for saying such things. Heaven forbid, Lord. He said, this will never happen to you. Look at Jesus' reply. Jesus turned to Peter and said, Get away from me, Satan. You are a dangerous trap for me. Kanikanina lang, wow. No human mind has revealed this to you. This has been revealed to you directly by God. Ngayon naman, get away from me, Satan. Which is to say that Peter's conclusion was say, a, a demonic doctrine. It was demonically inspired. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God's. And isn't that our dilemma sometimes as followers of Christ? Pagka nakikinig tayo ng message, when we read the Bible, we readily agree. And things are revealed in our minds. Wow, Lord, I finally understand how forgiveness works. I finally understand how your kingdom works, how generosity works, how faith works. Wow, Lord, thank you for the Holy Spirit. The world thinks that I'm weird because of these conclusions. I do not think like they do. Pero given na nagkaroon ng mahirap na sitwasyon, nagkaroon ng financial crisis, inaway ka ng kaibigan mo, iniwang ka ng asawa mo, ang bilis nating mag-revert back doon sa worldly thinking, Diba? Ang godly way of thinking, forgiveness, humility, generosity, grace, love. Pumabaling talaga, paagad tayo dun sa worldly thinking, panlalamang, ang makaisa, revenge, get even, greed, materialism. We say amen during a sermon, but when the rubber meets the road, we find ourselves often doing the opposite thing. Just like Peter. And so, we need to ask ourselves, how's the Peter in you? How is he doing? Has he committed any blunders recently? Have you leaned on human wisdom? Whatever it is that you're facing today, or in the past days, have you leaned on human wisdom instead of leaning on God's wisdom? Of course, we're very familiar with the biggest blunder that he committed. Ano? And we consider it the biggest blunder because he pledged his fierce loyalty to Jesus moments before this happened. Lord, I will never leave you over my dead body, Lord. These others, will, they will leave you, they will abandon you, but not me, not me. He pledged his loyalty to Christ but failed. Big time. He failed big time. Alam natin yung nangyari, ano? Uh, during Christ's arrest, eto nga, si Alpha Male, si Peter, kumuha ng espada, hiniwa pa yung tenga nung isa sa mga servants. War freak. War freak. And then, Jesus was taken to the high priest's home to be questioned, and Peter followed behind. And we know that this is where it took place. Let's read about this 
In Matthew 26, 69, beginning with verse 69, Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said, but he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Then he went out to the gateway, where another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, This fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath. I don't know the man. Folks, look at this. First two denials. Servant girl. Servant girl. Hindi nga security guard. Servant girl. Dininay niya ang Panginoon after proclaiming his loyalty to Christ. How heartbreaking. Ano po? Continuing on with verse 73, After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. Booking, kumbaga. Then he began to call down curses and he swore to them, I don't know the man. Nagmura pa. Immediately a rooster crowd. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken before the rooster crowds, You will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. How's the Peter in us? The Peter. Has he committed any blunders lately? Have you ever experienced denying Christ before your office mates, before your business partners, before your relatives, because of the pressure that they laid on you, because of a difficult transaction, because you were placed between a hard place and a rock? Have you experienced this? But I'd like to lay before you that the, the root cause of Peter's denial is not fear. The root cause of Peter's denial is spiritual pride. Spiritual pride. Let's rewind a few hours before this incident and read about the warning of the Lord not just to Peter, but to the rest of the disciples. Verse 31, the same chapter. Then Jesus told them, This very night you will all fall away on account of me. All, you will all fall away on account of me. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. Look at Peter's reply. Peter replied, Even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. And then Jesus predicts his denial. Truly, I tell you, Jesus answered, This very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Spiritual pride. From this passage, two characteristics of spiritual pride. Characteristic number one, you hear the words of the Bible for somebody else. Okay? You hear the words of the Bible for somebody else. What do I mean? Let's say that somebody is preaching about forgiveness. Okay? Preaching about forgiveness. This is how you think. Naku, sayang wala dito si brother so and so. Sana narinig niya yung sermon tungkol sa forgiveness. Para sa kanya yon. You see, you hear the words of God for others but not for you. See, ito yung words ng Panginoon. This very night, you will all fall away on my account. All of you. See, Peter, huh, that applies to them, but not to me. Second, okay, you hear the words of God for others. Second, you think that you're better than everybody else. Even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. I, I see, Lord, na yung ba, si Peter, very self-confident. I never will. I never will. Yet, he was the one who failed spectacularly by denying Christ three times. How's the Peter in you? Has he committed any blunders recently? Have you succumbed to spiritual pride? Have you experienced that? I have. I have. Peter pledged his loyalty to Christ, but he failed big time. He succumbed to spiritual pride. Well, what can we learn from Peter's failures? We learn from Peter's failures that his failures are our failures as well. 
our failures as well. So we can relate with Him actually. We can relate with Him actually. But we can also learn from His humility. Imitate Peter's humility. Imitate Peter's humility. You'd like to know how Peter started his journey with Jesus? How did Peter's journey with Jesus start? The first encounter was when John the Baptist was with a couple of his disciples. One of them was Andrew, the brother of Peter. And Jesus passed by, and John the Baptist pointed out to him, Ah, that's the Messiah. And so si Andrew, dali-dali siyang tumakbo, papunta sa kanyang kapatid. Bro, tol, nakita ko na yung Messiah. Halika, sama ka. So sumama si Peter. And uh, Andrew introduced Peter to Jesus. And you know what Jesus did? At that time, at that time, uh, Peter went by his given name, Simon. Doon binigay ni Jesus yung pangalan na Peter. Okay, you will be Simon, you will be called Cephas or Peter. Translation, ang ibig sabihin ng Peter ay rock. Simon, you will be called rock. And that's very interesting, ano? Kasi in light of the many blunders that Peter will, will commit, Jesus called him rock. What does that tell us? Well, it tells us that Jesus, the Lord, doesn't see you the way you are right now. But the Lord sees you in light of what you could become in Him. He sees your potential. He doesn't, you know, He accepts you as is where it is. Kung ano ka, mahal ka niya. Pero nakikita niya kung anong pwede kang maging. Ganun ho ang heart ng ating Panginoon. So that's the first encounter. The second encounter was when Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law. Ayan. And then the third encounter happened in Luke chapter 5. What happened was, Jesus was preaching along the shoreline of uh, Lake Galilee. And the people were pressing in on him. So, malaki yung crowd, sinisiksik ang Panginoon, hindi siya makapwesto, hindi siya makabuelo, kumbaga. He saw a boat uh, nearby and asked the owner, the owner was Peter, if he could borrow the boat so that he could preach from a uh, certain distance from the shore, giving him a good vantage point no, for the audience. And so, pinahiram ni Peter yung boat. During that time, Peter and his companions were washing their nets. Mga fishermen sila eh, di ba? Washing their nets. So picture with me this scenario. Jesus is preaching. Okay, Jesus is preaching. Peter was washing their nets. Familiar ba yan? Doon sa mga naglilid ng D-group? Ini-invite yung mag-D-group? Napipilitan? Ayaw. Pero sige na nga. Sama na lang sa D-group, pero parang hindi interested, laging nasa cellphone, basa-basa ng dyaryo. Dito lang ako, basta share-share lang kayo dyan. Parang ganun si Peter, ano? Nagpipreach si Lord, nag sila ng nets. But then, this is what happened after Jesus used the boat. Luke chapter 5, beginning with verse 4. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. In other words, overnight na silang nagtrabaho, walang huli. And ang isip ni Simon, ni Peter, ako ang expert dito eh, ako ang fisherman. Pero you can appreciate his attitude, no? But because you say so. But because you say so. I will let down the nets. So that's a very good attitude to emulate because you say so, Lord. It doesn't make sense, but because you say so, Lord. And his obedience led to the miraculous catch. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. The miraculous catch. Nagdoubt siya ng una, it was overcome by a miracle by our Lord Jesus. And then, when Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' feet and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. He realized right there and then that he was in the presence of the divine. 
at yung go away from me, Lord, hindi niya nire-reject ang Panginoon because we know that because just a couple of verses later, sabi niya, uh, sumunod sila sa Panginoon. They left everything and followed Him. So that is not a sign of rejection. That is a sign of this awareness of His unworthiness in the presence of Jesus. Lord, I am not worthy. I am not worthy. He suddenly became aware of the fact that He is a sinner. He is a sinner. And folks, this is always the beginning of our journey with the Lord. The realization that you are a sinner and that you have offended God with the way that you have been living. That's the starting point. And I don't know where you are right now in your journey, but if you had not started this journey, then maybe this is the first step for you to realize in the presence of Jesus, who loves you so much, by the way, that you have offended Him and that you have been living as a sinner. That's the first step. That's the first step. Whenever we have a personal encounter with our Master, we always realize how unworthy we are. Pero yung sense of unworthiness ni Peter, yung kanyang uh, doubts about himself, kanina, doubt, ang doubt niya doon sa fishing ability ni Jesus. Eh. Ngayon yung doubt niya sa sarili na niya. It was overcome by a promise. Sabi ng Panginoon, then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid, from now on you will fish for people. It's a promise about what he's going to do for the kingdom. So they pulled their nets, their boats up on shore, left everything, left everything, left their fishing business, and followed him, and followed him. Humility, mga kapatid. Do we have an awareness that we are sinners? Even as followers of Christ, do we have an awareness that we are still sinners? We are simply forgiven. That's the only difference. We're forgiven. But we are sinners. Humility. Humility. Now let's fast forward three years from this scenario and go to that place where Peter denied Christ. So he denied Christ three times. And look at what he did. He went outside and wept bitterly. He went outside and wept bitterly. Why did he go outside? Why did he weep bitterly? In order to answer that question, we must first ask ourselves this question. What causes you to mourn your sin? What causes you to mourn your sin? Is it the fear of being caught Bro, baka mahuli tayo ni boss. Mahirap tong racket na ginagawa mo. Yun ba yung motivation mo para magbago? Kasi baka mahuli. So, ibig sabihin, pag hindi nahuhuli, okay lang. Ibig sabihin, pag uh, nakahanap ka ng paraan para huwag ka mahuli, okay lang. Pero pag natatakot ka na, ay, magbabago na ako, baka mahuli. Is it the fear of being caught? Is it the fear of reaping the consequences? Pre, makasagap ka ng sakit sa ginagawa mong yan, ingat ka. Oo nga, no? Natakot sa sakit. Natakot sa financial failure. Natakot mawalan ng mahal sa buhay. Is it the fear of reaping consequences? Is it the fear of embarrassment? Wala pang nangyayaring ganyan sa pamilya natin. Nakakahiya. Magbago ka na. Walang ganyan sa pamilya natin. Is it the fear of embarrassment? Folks, let me tell you, if all your, your motivation for change come from one of these three, that change will be short-lived. It will be temporary. You see, fear of being caught. What if dumating sa point naman, hid ka na. Okay lang kung alam nila. So what? I don't live for them. I don't care what they say. Fear of reaping the consequences. What if you reach the place where your heart is so calloused and you decide that the trade-off is worth it, okay lang. Di ba, Lina? Ah, basta, masaya ako. Fear of embarrassment. You know what? The Bible tells of sinners who are actually proud of what they do. See, kung ito ang ating motivation, kulang. Temporary lang resulta. Short-lived lang ang pagbabago. So we need to ask ourselves, 
Is it the gut-wrenching torture of knowing that you have grieved the heart of a God who loves you deeply? Unless it is this kind of motivation, it, unless we are mourning because of this, we will never see change in our lives. You see, what brings about genuine and true repentance is the knowledge that you have offended God and that this God loves you dearly and yet this is how you live your life. It is not the fear of being caught, not the fear of reaping the consequences, not the fear of embarrassment, but the fear of God which causes you to mourn or in Peter's case to weep bitterly that you have sinned against God. You have sinned against God. Take a look at Psalm 51, 17. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart you, God, will not despise. What is a contrite heart? A contrite heart is a heart that feels remorse and sorrow for the sin that was committed. See, that is humility. That is humility. Humility displayed by Peter. Humility that we are invited to if ever we have failures in our lives. You see Peter, after so many years of walking with the Savior, after several experiences and several other blunders, he wrote to the persecuted church, First and Second Peter in the New Testament. And these are his words of wisdom. Humble yourselves. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. He may lift you up in due time. So, we learn from Peter's failures. We learn that Peter's failures are our failures. We tend to be emotional in our faith sometimes. Many times we see things from a worldly perspective. Many times we succumb to spiritual pride and we falter, we deny Christ, but we imitate Peter's humility. We have this sense, we have this awareness that we are sinful in the presence of God and that we have offended him. We have offended him. But the good news is we can depend on God's grace. We can depend on God's grace. What is our title once again? Say it with me. Finish well. Look unto the finisher of our faith. Look unto the finisher of our faith. You see, in running the race of faith, there is a part that we need to play, and there is a part that God's, God plays. Okay? Man's part and God's part. Our part is this. 2 Timothy 4, 7. I have fought the good fight. I have finished... Finishing well, diba? I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. This is the Apostle Paul speaking. Finish the race. Our part is to persevere, to endure in this race in such a manner that we will be able to finish it for the Lord. Okay, that is our part. How do we do that? Well, three things I'd like for you to remember. Always obey. Always repent. Always hang on to God's grace. Always obey. Why? Because we love Jesus. We obey out of our love for Him. Always repent. Why? Because we will always fail. As long as we're in this human body, we will fail. Always repent. Bumangon ulit. But always hang on to God's grace because this race is impossible to run apart from His grace. So that is our part. But God also has a part. Hebrews 12, 1 to 2, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. You see, if we're not careful, we may fall into this trap of thinking that everything depends on us. Nako, I have to hold on to God's promises. I have to say no to evil. I have to do this and that. I have to serve Him. I have to be fully devoted to Him. Nako, if I don't perfect this, paano na lang? Baka I may end up like those religious leaders who fell away into sin. Kung sa kanila nangyari, paano pa ako? You see, kasi everything depends on me. Uh, a month ago, I felt like I was bullied and harassed by a Christian brother. No, not a biological brother, a spiritual brother. And I was so angry. Why did this brother do this to me? 
What did I do to deserve this? I was so angry in my heart, but I was also mourning the fact that I was angry. Bakit ako ganito kagalit? Lord, Lord, is there hope for me? Ganito ang nararamdaman ko. But you see, if it all depends on me, it's a hopeless case. We are all hopeless cases. If everything depends on us. But that's the good news. Not everything depends on us. We have the author and finisher of our faith on our side. He has taken it upon himself to carry a bulk of that responsibility. Our part is to obey, to repent, and to always hang on to God's grace. His part is to provide for us all the resources that we will ever need so that we can finish this race. Take a look at Philippians. Philippians 1.6 And I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue His work until it is finally finished. Finishing well. On the day when Christ Jesus returns. God who began a good work in you, it was God's work, not yours, not ours, will continue His work. In us until it is finally finished. Isn't that comforting? Ano yung declare ng Panginoon sa cross? Tatlong words. It is finished. It is finished. The work required to secure everything that we will ever need to run this race successfully is already finished. It is done. And that, my friends, is a source of comfort. Wag ho natin kargahin yung burden na para bang tayo na lang yung inaasahan. At kung tayo sumablay, ay sorry na lang. Goodbye, heaven. No? Hindi ho ganun. So, Jesus restores Peter. Would you like? You see, Jesus is the finisher of our faith. Jesus is the finisher of Peter's faith. Would you like to see him in action? Ano yung ginawa ng Panginoon? Unang-una, Jesus prayed for Peter even before Peter committed the sin. Can you imagine that? Magkakasala na nga sa iyo yung tao. Hindi pa niya ginagawa, pinagpray mo na siya. Ganun yung ginawa ng Panginoon. Ano? Napakabuti ng Lord. Luke 22, 31-32. Binigyan niya ng warning about the Eventual denial. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked you, has asked to sift all of you as wheat, but I have prayed for you. I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. Jesus prayed for Peter. Not only that, Jesus prophesied over Peter regarding his repentance. Sabi, and when you have turned back. Hindi sinabing, and if you turn back. Makasakali. No. When. Mangyari. When you have turned back. And a future assignment. Strengthen your brothers. Strengthen your brothers. Folks, in your lowest moments, during your failures, do you know that Jesus is praying for you? The book of Hebrews tells us he is interceding before the Father in heaven on our behalf. Try to think about this, folks. The Prince of heaven, the Lord of lords, the King of kings is praying for you. He's praying for you. Especially during your moments of failures. Secondly, the angel at the tomb makes special mention of Peter. When did this happen? Well, after Christ died, he was buried at the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. And the following morning, the women came. Uh, morning of the third day. The women came to anoint his body with uh, spices. And they were worrying, how can we roll the stone? That's a very heavy stone. But then they came unto the tomb and the stone was already rolled away. And behold, an angel spoke to them. And this is a record of that encounter. Next slide, please. Don't be alarmed, the angel said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter. 
and Peter. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Special mention, the least deserving of them all got mentioned. So na-imagine ko, no? Alam ng Panginoon, eh, na very discouraged si Peter. Nakita niya yung repentance ni Peter. So I'm trying to imagine yung binili na message yun sa angel, oh, sabihan yung mga disciples, ah, especially si Peter. Especially si Peter. Very discouraged yun. Very discouraged yun. You know what? In your lowest moments, during your times of failure, the Lord is thinking about you. The Lord is thinking about you. You know what it says in Psalm 56 verse 8? The Lord keeps our tears inside a bottle. How tender, how loving, how compassionate. And the scenario that I have in my mind is that of a laboratory where you deposit your specimen, di ba? Nilalagay yun sa malilit na bote, nilalagay ng name mo para hindi magkapalit-palit. And I can imagine that there is this entire section dedicated to each one of us. Ah, this section is dedicated to Melissa. These were the tears that she shed when her mother died. March 23, 2020. Ah, these were the tears when she found out she has cancer. July 20, 2021. He keeps our records of our tears, folks. The Lord thinks about you the way he thought about Peter during his lowest moment in his faith. Isn't that comforting? That is the author and finisher of our faith at work. At work. Of course, lastly, Jesus ministers to Peter at the lake shore. This is my favorite. And the way it came about was, this was the third encounter of the disciples with the risen Lord after mabuhay na magmuli ng Panginoon. Ano? And Peter, they were at the shore of the Sea of Galilee and along with six other disciples, siguro na discouraged, tara, fishing tayo. Well, yun fishing yung, yung uh, magkakaibigan. Dumating si Jesus dun sa shore. Nakita, nila yung, nakita niya yung mga disciples. Tinan niya, oh, may pagkain ba tayo? Naku, wala kaming huli. Throw the net at the other side. Sounds familiar, di ba? When Peter first followed Christ, that was the miracle of the huge catch. Inulit, deja vu. Parang din remind ni Lord, oh, i-refresh natin ang memory niyo. E di, ang daming nahuli. Ang daming nahuli. Narecognize nung isa sa kanila, all of a sudden, oh, it is the Lord. Alam niyo ginawa ni Peter nung sinabi nung kasama niya na it is the Lord? Tumalun. Tumalon sa tubig, lumangoy, hindi nakapag-antay. What is it with Peter na tuwing nakikita si Lord habang nakasakay sa boat, tumatalon sa tubig? Di ba? Ganun niya kamahal si Jesus. Si Jesus, the, the Bible records that the boat was about a hundred meters away from shore. From here hanggang dun sa dulo ng mall na ito. Hindi nakapag-antay, lumangoy. Pagdating niya sa shore, nagtanong si Jesus, o asan yung huli niyo? Si Peter, Alpha male. <laughs> Mag-isang kinarga at kinaladkad yung net na punong-puno ng fish. 153. Eksakto. Hindi ako magtataka kung si Peter yung nagbilang nun. Eksakto. 153. That's equivalent to 250 kilos. Twice the weight that was lifted by Heidelin Diaz. Ano si Peter? Can you feel his personality and his, uh, his devotion to Jesus? In kanyang enthusiasm. Well, anyway, they ate breakfast together. Wow, breakfast along the shores of Galilee with Jesus. And this is what happened. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? More than what? Well, more than the fish? Baka kasi nag-iisip na si Peter na bumalik sa fishing business. Or more than these others do? Kasi si Peter yung very enthusiastic na mag-proclaim ng kanyang loyalty sa Panginoon. Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him a third time, 
do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Bakit three times? Kasi tatlong denials, di ba? Bakit kailangan tanungin ni Lord, do you love me? Paulit-ulit. We need to understand po that two words were used for the word love in this dialogue. One was phileo or affectionate love. The other one is agape or sacrificial love. In other words, phileo is like, I like you. Agape is like, I really love you. Mas malalim yung agape. Kung isa substitute natin yan dun sa passage, ito ang itsura. Sabi ni Jesus, Simon, son of John, do you agape me? Sabi ni Peter, yes, Lord, you know that I fillet you. Si Jesus ulit, Simon, son of John, do you agape me? You know that I fillet you. Iniiwasan na Binaba ni Jesus yung level, do you fillet you me? Sabi ni Peter, Lord, you know all things. You know that I fillet you you. Let's try to substitute the English equivalent. Do you love me? Sagot ni Peter, Lord, you know I like you. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Lord, you know that I like you. And then si Lord, binaba na niya sa level ni Peter. Oh, Peter, hindi ko na ipupush. Do you like me? Si Peter, hindi pa rin sinagot. Lord, you know all things. <laughs> you know that I like you. You know that I like you. What does this tell us? Alam niyo po, we need to understand that Peter was very discouraged. Before this incident, he was the one who would boldly proclaim his devotion to the Master. Can you see that at this moment, he was playing it safe? Ayaw na niyang ibigay ng todo. Sumablay siya eh. Sumablay siya, but Jesus was trying to draw him out. Where is this Peter that I know? Who are you? Where is the real Peter? Where are you? Peter, are you in there? Pero discourage nga, hindi niya pinush. Tinanggap niya kung ano yung kayang i-offer ni Peter sa kanya. Isn't it comforting that Jesus accepts our love from us no matter how imperfect? Hindi pa talaga ako ready mag-commit eh. Naku, huwag mong hintayin na kaya mo nang ibigay yung 100%. Hindi dadating yun. Mahal ka ng Panginoon, mahalin mo rin siya however imperfect that love may be. That love will grow as you journey with Him. That love will grow as you journey with Him. And then, tatlong beses ten, Feed my lambs, take care of my sheep, feed my sheep. Bakit tatlo? Kasi nga, tatlong denials. Bakit feed my lambs pa ulit-ulit? Well, you need to understand this is both a command and an assurance. It is a command because, Peter, out of your imperfect love, serve me. Feed my sheep. But it is also an assurance in that the Lord is saying, Peter, you are not disqualified. You are still qualified to feed my sheep. It is my grace that qualifies you. You are not disqualified. You have not, not lost your place in the kingdom. It is still there. It is still there. Ang galing mag-counseling ng Panginoon, ano? And lastly, sa verse 18, ito yung sabi ni Lord kay Peter, Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and you went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Kung kayo tatanungin, encouraging ba to depressing? Somebody will tell you the manner of your death. Depressing, di ba? Parang nakakapraning. Today na ba yun? Wala. Sige. Depressing. Well, I submit before you that this is encouraging. Unang-una, sabi niya, when you are old. Ibig sabihin, tatanda si Peter. Hindi siya mamamatay ng 
bata. Pangalawa, hindi siya mamamatay by freak accident, hindi siya mamamatay by illness. He will die a death that will glorify God. In other words, Jesus is assuring Peter, Peter, the next time you face danger or even death on my account, you will not deny me anymore. You see? Devastated siya because of the denial. And Jesus is assuring him, Peter, you will do exploit for the kingdom. You will grow old into a ripe old age. And you will face danger. You will even face death. But you will not deny me anymore. What will you do instead? You will glorify God. The complete opposite of what he just did a few days ago. You would glorify God. And to cap off itong ministry ng Panginoon sa beach, I'd like to present to you a comics version. Hindi ho ito sa ano, ah, theological books. This is uh, ano to? DIV, Dean's International Version. <laughs> Tingnan natin ano yung possible scenario, expanded edition. So si Lord tinatanong si Peter, Hey Peter, what's up? Sabi ni Peter, Nothing much, Lord. I remember how you left everything to follow me. I was wondering, Peter, do you still sacrificially love me more than this? Lord, I have always liked you as a friend. Playing safe. Peter, your place in my heart and in my kingdom are still reserved for you. They will not be taken away from you simply because you messed up. Anyway, I did not ask if you like me. I was asking about your sacrificial love. Lord, I said and promised a lot of things before, but I was not able to live up to what I said. My actions did not match my words. I am embarrassed, Lord. Anyway, I will never forget you and you will always have that special place in my heart. I appreciate that, Peter, but don't you ever think that you are disqualified simply because of that blunder. Don't worry, I won't push the issue. So, as you have said, will I always have that special place in your heart? Binabana ni Lord. Lord, you know all things. You see my heart. Yes, Peter, I know. But remember, Peter, you are not a fisherman anymore. I called you to be a fisher of men. You still are. Oh, Peter, if only you could see what I see. The great exploits that you will do for my kingdom. You will soar on the wings of an eagle, Peter. I assure you, when you someday face danger or even death on my account, you will not deny me anymore. You will instead bring glory to the Father. Alam niyo, bakit yun alam ng Panginoon? Bakit niya alam that someday Peter will not fail in that area anymore? You know why? Because Jesus is the author and finisher of Peter's faith. Jesus is the author and finisher of my faith. Jesus is the author and finisher of your faith. At alam niyo po, after this encounter at the lake shore, and after Peter's encounter with the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, ito yung kanyang ministry profile, si Simon Peter. Ano mga accomplishments niya? Early church leader. We read about this in Acts chapter 1. Preacher of the first gospel sermon. 3,000 converts in one sermon. Acts chapter 2 recorded. Minister of signs and wonders. Acts chapter 3. Pioneer missionary to the Gentiles. To the household of Cornelius. Acts chapter 10. Member of the Jerusalem Council. One of the church leaders in Jerusalem. Acts chapter 15. Writer of two New Testament epistles. We read about those epistles. We read those epistles in the Bible. First and second Peter. And arrested, beaten, imprisoned, and martyred for Christ. But there's one missing item here. What is that missing item? One who loved his master and fed his lambs. One who loved his master and fed his lambs. Finish well. Look unto the finisher of our faith. We learn from Peter's failures. Peter's failures are our failures. 
We embrace emotional faith sometimes. Many times we see things from a worldly perspective. Many times we succumb to spiritual pride and we falter and we fail and we deny Christ. But we learn from Peter's humility. We have this awareness that we are sinners. We have this awareness that we have offended God. And that is always the starting point for permanent, long-lasting change. And we let Jesus minister to us. Depend on God's grace. Allow him to lift you up. He doesn't see you where you are right now. He sees what you could become for him in his kingdom. He is the author and finisher of our faith. Shall we pray? Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for you have called us to be a participant in this exciting journey, Lord, of getting to know you in our lives, not just in our heads, but really knowing you, knowing you as one knows a friend. And Lord, it's not easy. In fact, it's impossible. But thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit that enables us. But many times we are stubborn, and when we do fail, Lord, help us to repent. Help us to be humble like Peter. Help us to turn to you and ask for your forgiveness. To keep on obeying, to keep on repenting, and to keep on hanging on to your grace. For you are the author and finisher of our faith. You have guaranteed that someday we will stand before you and we will hear from you, Lord. Well done, good and faithful servant. Thank you, Father, for you take it upon yourself to send us before the Father, blemish-free and blameless. Thank you, Father, for dressing us in garments of white linen, making us righteous before the Father, not on our account, but on account of the blood that you have shed on the cross of Calvary. Father, we praise you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.